Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Common Network Threats Part 1. Today we're going to be discussing inside jobs or threats, and we're going to conclude with some outside threats to your network. With that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about inside jobs or threats. First up is malicious employees. We may not know the reason why they're malicious, but they are difficult to defend against as they are already inside the defenses of the network. And because they're employees, resources have been granted to them in order for them to be able to do their job. One of the best defenses against malicious employees is using the principle of least privilege only granting the least amount of authorization that is required for a person to get their work done. That's the best defense against a malicious employee. Compromised systems are another threat. Once a PC or network device has been compromised, it is vitally important to isolate it from the system as a whole. A compromised PC could lead to a completely compromised network as malware may be able to spread across its connections. Once malware has gained access to network resources, it can be extremely difficult to root out and remove. Malware may also degrade the network's performance, causing other issues. Then there is social engineering. This is the process of using social pressure to cause somebody to compromise a system from inside the defenses of the network. Social engineering pressure can be applied in multiple forms. An employee can receive a phone call from somebody claiming to be from the IT department asking for their credentials. It may occur in person. The social engineering can occur through email or through a rogue website. There are many avenues in which social engineering can occur. The best defense is through end user education. Training your end users to resist social engineering is a good idea. ARP cache poisoning is another threat that can occur on your network. In ARP cache poisoning, the ARP cache, which maps IP addresses to MAC addresses, is corrupted by an attacker with the end result being that the attacker has control of which IP addresses are associated with MAC addresses. It's commonly used in man-in-the-middle attacks, which I will cover in just a bit. Then there are protocol or packet abuse threats. This is the process of taking a specific protocol and repurposing it to perform a different function. Protocol abuse is commonly used to bypass a router's access control list from inside of a network. An example of this is encapsulating a not allowed protocol within a DNS packet, which is almost always an allowed protocol, in order to get that unallowed protocol out of the network. The man in the middle attack is another threat that you should be aware of. The attacker is not necessarily inside the network per se, but is in between two endpoints that are communicating on a network. In most cases, the man-in-the-middle attack involves disrupting the ARP process between the two endpoints. The attack allows a malicious user to be able to view all network packets that are flowing between the communicating hosts. Often, a man-in-the-middle attack is used in an attempt to gain sensitive information like network credentials. Then there's VLAN hopping. This is circumventing the security that is inherent when virtual local area networks are created. Normally, traffic that is tagged for one VLAN is not allowed onto another VLAN without the intervention of a router. VLAN hopping occurs when the attacker adds an additional fake VLAN tag to the network packets. Once the packets get to the switch, the switch strips one of the VLAN tags off the packet and then passes it through. Once through the switch, the packet is considered as belonging to the new VLAN, thus bypassing the security that's inherent in VLANs. Now let's move to outside threats. One of the largest threats that face network security personnel is the unknown vulnerability. 
Network and systems administrators expend vast amounts of time protecting the assets under their control, and they can do a pretty good job of hardening their systems, but it's not a perfect job. The problem lies with zero-day attacks. Zero-day attacks take advantage of either new or recently discovered vulnerabilities, which means that the networks and systems probably haven't been hardened against them yet. The unfortunate reality is that attacks keep changing and security experts must be willing to adapt in order to keep pace. If they can't adapt, they will fall behind and their networks become vulnerable. Let's talk about the brute force attack. This is using computing power and time to compromise passwords. The attacker uses a program that continually tries different password combinations often in the form of a special dictionary application, in an effort to crack a password. The best defense against this is to limit the number of times that a user can attempt to log on before they're locked out. Then there's spoofing. This is a category of threats where either the MAC address or the IP address of the attacker has been modified to look like a friendly address in order to bypass network security. A common use in the past was for an attacker to spoof their IP address so that the outside attacker was actually viewed as an inside host. A common defense against this type of spoofing is an ACL rule that doesn't allow an inside IP address to come from outside of your network. Then there's session hijacking. An attacker attempts to take over a communication session after a user has been authenticated. The hijacking can occur through various methods, as in using a packet sniffer to steal a session cookie or installing malware on a user's computer that is activated after the user is authenticated. That concludes this session on Common Network Threats Part 1. I talked about inside jobs or threats, and then I concluded with a brief discussion on some outside threats. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.